This is Jumbo Radio. Guys, today on the show, I have such a treat for you all. That is because we have the phenomenal Nana Mensa, inspirational writer, director, actor of the brand new prize winning film, Queen of Glory. Can I get close on for that, Serena, please? <laughs> Nana is a Ghanaian American actress, American actress, a writer, director, and unless you've been living under a rock, you've seen her in Star Making Turns in 13 Reasons Why, An African City, New Amsterdam, The Chair, and so many other productions. Well, last year, Nana decided to make her directorial debut, Queen of Glory, which had its festival premiere in 2020 21 and was released this year in 2022. The film is about a Ghanaian American academic who inherits a Christian bookstore before pass the, the, after the passing of her mother. And Nana won Best New Narrative Director and Special Jury Prize for Artistic Expression at the Tribeca Film Festival, where the film premiered. Queen of Glory was also nominated for Best First Feature at the 2021 Film Independent Spirit, Independent Spirit Awards and has many, many more awards and film prizes. Um, Nana is here to discuss this incredible project, how it came to life, all the success and the buzz it's gotten, and how it's being screened right here in Glasgow, right here on Wednesday, 31st of August at 6.15 at the Glasgow Film Theatre. This is going to be an incredible conversation and I cannot wait to start. Now, you know what to do, everybody. Combine the three magic words, Jambo Radio in Scotland, and you will find us all across social media on facebook twitter instagram where ready to get your social media or just go to www.jamboradio.co.uk and you can listen right now live if you want to call into the studio you know what to do the number is 07437826865 once again 07437826865 8268825 you can call it and talk to nana directly how amazing would that be or me or serena we're all here um and if you want to just leave a comment go to our facebook page we're live right now you can watch us our beautiful faces nana's beautiful face as well and you can leave a comment do whatever you need to do we'll read out your comments live on air you'll be with us you can listen to us suggestions questions opinions anything about what we talk about you're welcome to join the show all right, I've stalled enough. It is time for the woman of the hour herself. Here is Nana Mensa. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi. <laughs> it is so good to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. It's such a treat. Thank you for having me. I want you to intro me for everything. I want you to intro me <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be, I'm gonna walk around with you. Baby, are you coming? We're going. Let's go. Let's yeah, go. Here is Nana exactly. Mensa. V Nana Mensa. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, I know I introduced you, but if you could just tell us a little tiny bit about your background, just to share with the listeners to get them have a t- let them have a feel for you. Sure, sure. So, I'm an actor, uh, writer, director mm-hmm. in no particular order. <laughs> um, I, um, and then I am. Uh, I live in London now, but I am mm-hmm. Ghanaian American. Mm-hmm. Um, and I made this film, and we shot it. Uh, it took me a really long time to make it. We'll get into that, I'm sure later. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's finally here, and I'm so, so, so thrilled to share it with you guys. And, mm-hmm. and the fact that we are, you know, we are now. Um, we premiered last night, mm-hmm. and we are now playing in tons of theaters all across London, across the UK, and Scotland. I'm so, so, so thrilled. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's the, those are the most important bits. <laughs> it's been a lot of work, hasn't it? I know, I mean, I, I re- I've read reviews where people were screening in Tacoma, Washington, in Ohio, in New York, now in Scotland. Like, how have you made this happen? How is this happening? It's everywhere. I mean, that's super exciting. It's funny that you should say that because mm. to me, it's not in enough places. <laughs> like, I, because people, you know, because I'm like, you know, social, God bless it. But it's like, mm-hmm. I'll have somebody be like, when is it coming to South Africa? And like, when is, you know, exactly. like, and I'm like, I don't know. Like, when is it coming to France? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, 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 it's funny because I'm thinking it's not enough places. No, it will, but it will be. It will it's be. Some, it's somewhere in the middle. It's somewhere it, in the middle. But yeah, it's going to be. We premiered in New York in July, uh, mm-hmm. 15th of July, and then LA the 22nd of July, and then mm. like it's just been rolling out slowly across the US, right. in various cities and, and towns. And now we're here, 
uh, in the UK, and, and it's been Fantastic. so wonderful. It's been such a wonderful. You know, last night was delightful. So such a wonderful, warm reception. I'm, I'm Fantastic. Lucky. Fantastic. I, I, you went out last night. You look. You look this amazing this morning. Okay. Fine. Oof, fine, Nana. Fine. That is, bless, you. <laughs> bless you. I am. I am not gonna lie. I am struggling. <laughs> <laughs> or just relax. Grab a coffee. It's gonna be great. Conversational. You know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so little Brady tells me you went to boarding school in Connecticut. Now, I went boarding yeah. school in Shagamo. So I'm having, I think it's not the same, maybe not the same experience. <laughs> maybe you were in fetching buckets of water for seniors, uh, you know, at odd hours. Maybe not the same experience. No, okay. <laughs> How was that? Was that interesting going to board, going away to school? Oh, it was so, it was so interesting, you know, because the thing is, is that I really wanted to go. Um, that was the first thing. I think a lot of times, I, it's not not so in, on the continent, but I think mm. when you say in the U.S. that you mm. went to boarding school, mm. like, oh, what did you mm. do? Mm. like I'm so sorry. And it's like, no, <laughs> you're no, sent no. away. <laughs> yeah, they sent you away. Like, you were sent away. Exactly. Like, like the way that our parents are like, I'll send you to the bush. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Like, you sent to boarding school. school. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so my parents both went to boarding school, so it was, yeah, it was so already it was all, normal. All the same. People. And even though I was in the States, I was like, I would like to go too. I think it's really great to cool. go and have a little bit of guided independence yes. before you're kind of unleashed into university and then True. the world. I, I, and I, and I really exactly. do credit it with my ability to like be self-sufficient. And yes. Like, you know. Yeah, for sure. You know, true. No, it's true. I completely agree. Completely agree. Okay. And weirdly, and weirdly, actually, sorry, this is, you know, just a deep dive. But Why one not? of the things that I think is really interesting is that there was an admissions counselor that uh -huh. was at that school at the time, a black man, uh -huh. and a black American man. And he had let the, like, he had done such great work with diversity. So actually, some of my best friends, Ghanaian friends, yes. I met at a boarding school in Connecticut. In Connecticut. That's like random. crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really my crazy. God. We had this thing in Nigeria where it was a unity idea, all the different tribes. So you get, if you're from the south, you go to school in the north, from the north, you go to the east. And also you get to meet other tribes and then you get, it's normal to you. It was a great idea at the time. I, I don't know who came up with it, but it really worked. And till today you get friends from all over, different, you know, ethnicities and all of that. It was a great idea. That's so I, I get, I, I do get it. I do get it. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's really smart. I'm going to ask you one more question before we talk about the, the project itself. And that is, what do you feel? Do you feel American? Or do you feel Guinean? Do you feel a little bit of this, a little bit of that? I mean, Bibi, that's the whole movie, right? <laughs> that's, that's the whole point. That, like, I don't feel quite anything. Like, mm -hmm. I feel the most at home with my other, like first generation African, African friends. friends. Like that's where I feel like, because they get it. They get the mm. references. They get the mm. jokes. Mm. They get the feeling not quite from one place, not mm. quite from the other. Mm -hmm. Um yeah i think i think it's a bit of a mishmash i think it's something that's going that i'm going to be exploring and trying to unpack my whole life you know where do i really fit in the most um so i think it's it's, it's a little bit of both i feel Ghanaian, i feel american you know i'm excited to feel european or british you know like as i as my life here continues to develop yeah i i i agree it's just when i was watching the film it struck me as she was a bit of a loner like you know, it's, yes, it's a story of a narrative. I'm going to ask you about that. Do you think it was about a narrative of an immigrant, an immigrant's journey, or her Sarah's journey? Because she seemed like she didn't have that group of friends she could like lean on during, you know, the funeral and all of that. She just seemed like she was alone and she was doing her own thing. She, yes, she had, um, you know, the, her colleague at the at the bookstore, but the entire time I felt like, where's your team? Where's your posse? Where's your where are your people? Your your group of friends? Did you write? Did you do that on purpose? Yeah, that was by design. I think it was really important to show because like her big want in, the, you know, they say when you're writing that your character has to be, have like a big want and her big want is community, right? And so like in the beginning, she thinks that she's going to achieve that by um, moving with her boyfriend to Ohio. And then that's going to be like, you know, Ohio is like this magical place where she's just going to like snap into something and yeah. like, you know, really be a part of something. And then, of course, that ends up not being the case. Spoiler alert. And um, and so, and so, what? And you know, so, but she does end up by fi finding community in a place where she didn't anticipate. Yeah. 
And I think that that's really um, beautiful. And I think that that, like, you know, if I do say so myself, but like I do, like I, I, I love that about, that's one of the things that I'm proudest of of the film is that very like clear linear arc of finding something that she didn't anticipate finding. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. How much would you like us to spoil the film? Do you want us to keep it mysterious or can I go in or let's leave it? I mean, <laughs> it's okay. Oh my God, that's such a hard question. I don't know. Because <laughs> the things I want to ask you, like, uh, I want to ask you some things. Yeah, yeah. You're like, so not the ending. Maybe let's not spoil the ending. But okay. I mean, you know, one of the things that I, I think about this film is that, like, we're not inventing anything mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, it is a style of film that people will have seen before, like the mm -hmm. fish out of water, mm -hmm. return to home, mm -hmm. like less, you know, so there's, nothing, there's no real gotcha, you know, mm -hmm. it's not the sense, you know, like it's not, it's, it's no, not no, but like it, it does, ha it does have special moments like the superimposition, how you super superimposed the old footage. Um, the Guinean oh, right. footage yeah. from, you know, back home yeah. over the new, so whenever anything was happening, you know, the tribal, yeah. you know, tribal, yeah. foot, that was really nice, was really beautiful. I really enjoyed that. Oh, thank yeah, you. I, yeah, I, I, I'm a sucker for old footage. I'm a sucker for old. Me I like too. to see what, what were they and up to? How did they look? You know? You know, and the answer is they always looked kind of flames. Like, <laughs> it's like... That mm -hmm. was one of the things that I loved mm -hmm. about like, just mm -hmm. diving into that archival footage with the art. So I worked with an archivist for that. Right. Um, because I didn't even know where to begin to yeah. source that kind of footage. Yes, I yes. I wanted it. Yes. And so like, so I, I ended up sourcing um, that footage with a, a Ghanaian-American. Um, actually, I don't think she's American. I think she's a Ghanaian archivist. Ghanaian archivist. archivist. Yeah, her name is Rita Benison. Mm -hmm. And so she sourced all that footage. And then we would watch Fantastic. it and then pick and things that we wanted yeah. and one of the things that was really amazing was that those everybody was so dressed and like oh yeah oh they really didn't no. to see like footage from that time mm, you know? they weren't playing no they're playing back in the day like you know when the mini skirt when you're growing up your mom's like don't wear a mini skirt and all that and you're like one second you look through the albums like this is a traditional outfit but that was a mini mini wrapper <laughs> <laughs> me rapper with the with the shoe the platform shoes so no, don't start <laughs> yeah <laughs> like Listen, okay you were you were showing your silent. legs <laughs> yes she <Mommy> was silent. <laughs> she even grandma if, if you if you go even back grandma. Now, even grandma <laughs> right so queen of glory it came to you you just decided to do it was it a labor of love what is something that was done in a second what it tell us all about it well, so it's cover to cover. I would say that the film has been like an almost decade long journey. Wow. It's taken wow. me to make this film. Um, it started with, which I've told this story before, but I, like, it's a fun story, so I'll tell you. Um, but like, it started with me writing, not getting, not being able to even get arrested for the acting roles that I wanted to get arrested for. <laughs> Like, I couldn't, I just couldn't. Like, everyone's like, oh, you're a New York af actor, so you did, like, Law & Order, right? And it's like, no, Law & Order wants nothing to do. Um, no one has a body. So, no one has a body. Not even a dead body on Law & Order. I could not get it. I couldn't get anything. Oh my God, and so I, I was like, okay, you know what? I I love telling stories, and I wanted mm -hmm. to do it as an actor, but maybe that's not my path. Maybe I should just explore writing. Mm -hmm. Because my parents were like, go to law school and I was like I don't want to be hey, a lawyer I, do hey. and so I, was, I was trying really hard to me even if I couldn't make it in the way that I wanted to make it it was like mm -hmm. just to be able to like be in the business mm -hmm. so I ended up um doing a lot of uh doing a lot of uh writing I mm -hmm. wrote this very 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 expensive sweeping biopic and I had a mentor mm -hmm. and I was like look I'm gonna I'm gonna um I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna write the script. I'm gonna show it to my mentor. She's going to be like, wow. wow. She's gonna hook me up. She's gonna hook me up with her agent. Oh, my Lord. whole life is gonna start. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> I sent her the script, and she was like, <clears throat> she was like, baby girl, um, what is this? <laughs> like, <laughs> it is my opus, like, my magnus, <laughs> my, my opus, <laughs> my opus. What, what is this? And so she was like, no, 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 like, that's not how this works. Like, no one knows who you are. And now you've gone <laughs> off and written this extremely expensive thing. Why would a producer give you a hundred million dollars? <laughs> when you can't even get a job on Law and Order. Like, 
you as doing? a dead body. What are you doing? And so, <laughs> and so, let alone as a writer. And so I was like, holy moly, okay. So let me revisit what yeah, I Yeah, go do. back a little bit. And so let me pivot. And so I did. And mm. I think that's like the, the moral of the story is being mm. able to pivot because I could have said, forget you. Like, I'm I, I can this do this on my, <laughs> on my own. And then she was like, go away. She was like, look at the directors that you respect. Look at Barry yeah. Jenkins. Mm. Um, look at, like, I mean, there's so many. Ed Burns, um, mm. early Woody okay. Allen, um, okay. Lena Dunham, Issa Rae. Mm -hmm. Look at these directors. And they all started out, their first projects were all modest independent yeah films. yeah they were, they were really able to, to to display their voice you know mm -hmm. and like kind of like bring, like bring their voice and so i was like okay okay got it so i did and that was how queen that was the beginning of That's, queen the, yes Boy. yes yeah so I, that was and so i so she was like write it around things that you can get access to for cheap mm -hmm. or free mm -hmm. family owned christian store in the bronx yes and i knew that it was closed on sundays because yeah. they go to church right so, I knew so you that, could film okay, that sunday had it, we could film there because there would be no customers. We could have our run of the place. So we did that. And um, and then like a friend of mine owned a restaurant. He let us shoot there for one day for free. Like I, they, I just ended up kind of like cobbling okay. it together with a lot of favors, a lot, BB, so many favors. Um, they're going to come and, back um, when, it's, when, when, when you become uh, like, uh, they're like, oh yeah. You remember when? <laughs> that time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's already started to happen. It's so funny when my aunt went to, my, when my aunt went to go see the, the, the film in a movie mm -hmm. theater mm -hmm. in New York. She was like, all the people there, she was like, that's, that's my niece, my that's my bookstore, <laughs> that's my whatever. I, I, I did like, not. Thank you, God, thank you, because the, the way wonderful. this woman, the way I put this woman out, oh my Wonderful, goodness. wonderful. It so and it's great to see aunts getting appreciation. This is a pivot, by the way, because I basically raised my, my niece. And you always get at the end of, you know, the speech, the big speech at your awards are like, I want to thank my mom. I want to thank my dad. I want to thank, yeah, where are the aunties? I never hear, I want to thank my auntie. Like what? We did school runs. We did all that stuff. <laughs> like, why listen, aren't we thanked? Listen, my auntie, shout out to Auntie Comfort. Okay? Yay. Auntie Comfort. <laughs> Uh, anti appreciation uh, <laughs> <We appreciate you. laughs> so um so did you did they did you film i heard the house you filmed in was also owned by family as well yes i could yep, tell yep. i could all tell you it, looked uh, so authentic it. it was so authentic yeah 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 mm -hmm. that was that was that was her house we shot mm -hmm. i mean we would do stuff like it wasn't as um uh, her aesthetic like her mm -hmm. furniture and stuff like that okay is what i was going for there were some things that we added yes um, yes you know, kind of like because production design right like you want to mm -hmm. make sure that there's things things to, see. to look at yes kind of like whatever yeah so we did do some set design but for the most part that was that was her house yeah. i mean you are i mean you're a natural obviously you're absolute natural at acting so now with the writing and the you know the directing have you based on the bug are you going to do it again is this something going forward are you going to do it again i i will never ever <laughs> ever Right, direct, and star at the same time. Again. Don't say never. never. Don't say never. No, 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 never, no. no. no BB, 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 never. <laughs> it's never. a lot. <laughs> Trust me, never. Oh, wow. Um, however, I will. I hope to write and direct again. Mm -hmm. I hope to act again. Mm -hmm. I hope to maybe even write and act again. But I will never combine the three. Because it just like, I mean, I won't know until the end of my life how many years I shaved off of my life by doing that. You know, it's like, you but look I, good I, though. I, I can't tell you how many years, but I know I lost time, something. Okay? I something. Lost time on this time. I lost something by doing what I did. Don't it was worry. So stressful. It's it worth it. So stressful. All worth it all worth it all <laughs> worth it i was going to talk and i'm not going to spoil the film but i just want to um ask a few things about the film if that's okay so of the course. fight with her dad was she crazy like what was going like <laughs> i was watching i was like no no everyone, maybe maybe everyone. in ghana but not in nigeria like i don't know what am i watching <laughs> When we do, when we did Q and A's in the states, mm. all the all the Africans were like, <laughs> like that funny? because like literally, how did the film end when he murdered her? Like what? 
see, you know, you know, gone too soon and all that stuff. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, cut to cemetery. I, yeah, like, cut to exactly. Cool. I like I like yeah. the ambition though. I, I do like it. Like the con I, I think I, I think it was controversial. Maybe not too it's hugely <laughs> like, controversial. Oh no, no no, it's hugely controversial. And I think that we and we you know, one of our uh our, of our producers, one of whom is also Ghanaian. Right. And he and I talked about it a lot because mm -hmm. I was like, look, like that's like he was like I was like that would never happen and he Ever. was like but he was like but it's not she's a different yeah it is and, <laughs> and, and and it is it is heightened you know it's I'm not sorry. about what you would it's do it's not a documentary that's hilarious <laughs> because in it's real life mm -hmm. actually, listen that is something <laughs> that you need to hear sometimes when you're like, but I wouldn't do that. I would never do that. And he was like, mm -hmm. right, this isn't about you. Mm -hmm. This is not you. This is, you know, this is a story like, we're telling. You, this mm -hmm. And this is a story that we're telling. And at this point in the story, we need a heightened moment of, wow. of conflict, a heightened, a heightened moment of drama. So he was mm -hmm. really advocating for it. And I wow. was nervous. And then I was like, you know what? Let's, let's do let's it. Let's do it. Wow, that that came out of yeah. nowhere. I was like, and my daughter was like, "Yes." I'm like, "No, no, no." Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I would say generally, generationally, that's for mm -hmm. real because, like, I would say that, like, Gen Z, like a mm -hmm. millennial, like I would say Gen Z would be a little bit more like, yeah. um, yes. Gen Z is very into that. Like they are like you, you meet like yes, elders be damned. Like, I, like I if you are out of order, I'm gonna call you on it. You know. Yeah. Whereas I think millennials, I think we're a little bit more respectful of yes, like the, of the I, yes, you know the hierarchy. I'm like I, I'm a progressive. I believe I'm progressive, but I, uh, no, <laughs> we're not, no. I told her it's a curse. She's like, really? I was like, yes, it's a curse. If you touch your parents, that's a curse. She's like, really, really, right. is it? <laughs> yeah, I love that you're, you're gonna squeeze that in. You're just trying to yeah, make sure. Yeah. Um, so we talked about the superimposition of the footage. We talked about that, and then taking off the hair. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Oh, I was dang. like, when is her hair coming out? When is her hair coming out? And then it came out. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was glorious, and that was a great moment. Oh. That was a great Thank moment. You. Was that on purpose as well? Yeah. Was it? Did you plan yeah, yeah, for that yeah. to happen? I mean, yeah. It, it was. It was definitely on purpose. I think mm. that, like, um, I think what was amazing about that moment for me mm. was that like it, it that image of her that ends up being the image on the poster yes the image of, yes you know, that image of her with her hair out her natural hair out wearing the traditional garment like you know i think that that moment is really it's very quite special because what it is is it's a visual representation of the diaspora right because it's like you know you go back home to nigeria you go back home to ghana it's like the girls love their weaves, their wigs, their extensions. Like that is the vibe, you know? Like the natural hair movement is still, it's still coming. Like I have a lovely place that I finally found to get my hair done in Accra, but it's not quite there, you know? And uh, like, I, I, I'm reminded of that Chris Rock documentary, Good Hair, right? Where he, where he, he uncovered that the biggest importer of Indian and Chinese hair is the continent of Africa. And so, we love our weaves, we love our wigs, we love our extension. And so for me, what that moment is, is like this hairstyle that is really embraced in the diaspora. Mm. And then this traditional garment. It's literally like a like a visual representation of yeah. that hyphen of Ghanaian American, of Ghanaian yeah. American, like yeah. literally seeing that. Yeah. And that was what it meant. That's what it meant to me. That was what I was achieve, like, seeking to achieve as a director. I, I, think, I, think, I think you did achieve it. But I, I would say like things have moved leaps and bounds. Like in Africa, like you, you can do, I mean, braids and big sure. natural hair is like, you know, it's... it's sure. For sure, like, yeah. but every time, like up until a, like a couple years ago, every mm. time that I would go to my mother's salon or any mm. salon, they'd be mm. like, oh, your hair is so nice. Why don't we put some small pants? Just some small pants. <laughs> no. My they mom. would be like, your hair will be so beautiful if you permed it. Oh. If you, you know what I mean? And yeah, that, that, and I don't, I don't have that experience anymore because, like I said, yeah, it's, I, I it's all lucky. yeah. My cousin mm. introduced me to a woman who does natural hair. Yeah, and her yeah. salon is always packed. There are yeah, the of women out crowd. Yeah, seeking out natural hair. Natural hair, hair yeah. And, yeah. I understand, but so that I, that I, mindset I, was there for a long time. 
but that mi- that mindset still still yeah. it's still yeah i mean i'm crazy. always amazed by the array is when it comes to braiding like wow we're undefeated like and you can get it for the amount of money you get it for like are you serious like it's incredible it's just so affordable no. And it's go ahead. so affordable, but also one of the things that I, I, because uh, I'm uh, going to be doing a play next year mm-hmm. on Broadway, mm-hmm. um, and I, and I am um, that I'm an actor, and I didn't write it. But one, when we were doing a workshop of the play, one of the things that we uncovered, we were like, wow, like if Black women mm-hmm. were able to be, um, Black women are not obviously valued as highly in our society. And um, in, in the West, in the West, <laughs> yeah. right, in the West, of course. <laughs> Sorry, in our society, like I meant, in the West, as mm-hmm. being diaspora, mm-hmm. um, we often have to fight to be seen and to mm-hmm. be valued. Mm-hmm. And and women who braid hair are artisans. They are proper artisans. The designs, the technique, the everything that they like. So if if it were a service that were provided to white men, I think it would cost three thousand dollars. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, so it's mm-hmm. so, and I, I, I've had to. I really took that in when we were having that part of the discussion because I always used to feel so irate when I would go to get my hair braided in New York. You know, like oh, you know, three hundred dollars or like whatever, and I would just be like, ah, you know what? But then I'm like, wait a minute, this woman is doing eight hours of work. Her, her feet, her I, arthritis in her hands to sculpt this beautiful design for me to wear for for months yeah. at a time. Pay them their money. Pay I, them their money. They are artisans. I agree. I agree. But at the same time, um, because I come from, I grew up in Nigeria. I lived in Nigeria a lot, and we change our hair so and often. You know what it costs we, uh, yeah, I, I know what it costs there. We know we sit down in the salon, and the next week you're gonna take it out or two weeks time. It's not like here where you you braid your hair, like you're holding on to it for dear life. Or, you, you know, you change it all the time, and then you sit down with the girls. Or the, now it's boys who are doing braids. By the way, it's crazy. Right. Things have changed so much. Amazing. So when I hear three hundred, I was like, what? No, but I, I I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. You know what I, I mean? What yeah. It's like it's not because we aren't in Nigeria. We are here. Yeah. Like, mm. for, yes. Yes. Like, yeah. This person is providing a service, and yeah. if I and, and so it was an interesting conversation, philosophical mm. conversation of mm. like, if I value myself mm. so highly, and this person is providing this service for me, mm. am I obligated? Aren't I obligated to elevate to, their yeah. service? Yeah. The level that I the, at which I regard myself, yeah. and so I've started to like. Think about that mm. differently when I approach like any sort of situation like that. Yeah. You know, anyway. it's true. I understand. I understand. Yes, I understand what you mean. So, do you think this project now is going to change? Is I know you say you didn't you didn't reinvent the wheel, but I think you did a fantastic job of sh- showcasing somebody who is not orthodox, um, in the you know stereotypical and stereotypical you know African immigrant. Da 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 da. You, you put all of that together. So, do you think is you've moved the needle? Are there going to be new characters like this who are unusual, un- non stereotypical, dating married men I mean, publicly? Um, yeah. Who said that? Who said that? I, <laughs> I think you know. I I I hope so, but I'm also very aware of the fact that, like, I mean, not to get on my soapbox for a minute, but like, mm-hmm. this industry has mm-hmm. contracted a lot, right? Like, the film industry of like going to the movie theater has contracted right, yes. a lot, and it up be the pandemic and everything yes, like that. Sure. And I think one of the things um, that we have to be very careful about is that the only films that get a really big platform to go see them in the movie or those tentpole films, yeah, those Marvel films. Marvel. And, and, and what we have to be, I think, especially as black people, black people in the diaspora, mm-hmm. what we have to be really careful about is making sure, and obviously this is a very self-serving comment, but mm-hmm. that we show up for films like Queen of Glory yeah. and, and vote with, our, vote with our, our, our buying a ticket, yeah, right? And yeah. like telling us, that's yeah. the bottom. It's all about the bottom line when it comes to the accounting. It's just going to be like, did this film draw an audience to this movie theater? And if so, then I'm going to program another film like that to come to my movie theater next time someone makes one. And therefore, it, it, it's a full cycle, you know? That means that there will be more resources available to another filmmaker, a diasporan filmmaker, the next time around, you know? Like, they won't have to fight as hard as I did to get funding, to get recognition, to kind of get the film completed so i mean so the answer is yes but only if we support each other you know only if we buy tickets to, to you know to events and, and, the, and theatrical 
I think it's it's very ambitious of you to make a film like this. It's a, a, it's a very artistic film at a time like this. So not only at a time of, you know, the Marvels and all that, you know, uh, but at a time when theatres are, you know, seeing a bit of a loss in, tic- in ticket sales and all that, and then post-pandemic as well, you know, and then an African story, well, an, uh, an African-American immigrant story. So there's a lot of, but you went ahead, I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to do it regardless. And that's incredible. No, no, that's, and, and that's to be commended. So we should, we will come out and support it. Why not? Yes, we will. And we're going to blast it all over, you know, all over our social media, all over our, our websites, on the air, every 15 minutes, right, Serena? <laughs> and to make sure people go out and see it. So is it going to be, okay. is it premiering on the Wednesday? And is that um, is it, on the thirty first? Yes, I, I, I oh, this is a terrible. I'm not sure, mm-hmm. but I, I, I don't know if Wednesday is the first day it's available, or mm-hmm. if it's just the day that I'll be there to do a Q and A afterward. Um, it, but right to, now, if you want to fact check me, mm-hmm. it's queenofglory.co.uk, mm-hmm. and that has all the, all the information for everywhere that it's playing. Okay. all over all okay. over the- i think it's playing right now but i think you're pr- you're coming tonight starting tonight and then you're coming on the wednesday yeah you're coming so you have what okay, you're wearing great. you yes. have what you're wearing you got a dress um i do yes i do, yay, I, do yay. Have <laughs> I can't yeah. wait to see you <laughs> right i was going to ask you so all the awards you've won and all the recognition all the buzz it's gotten what has been the most exciting of all of which is the one you go oh they mentioned me they like me i think the most exciting was the uh film (laughs) is the one that i was nominated for and didn't win which (laughs) was uh the film the film independence experience um right that is uh an award that i am so um i am so humbled to be included uh in that in that because there's so many like amazing directors who have been recognized there yes and i think it was and also it was our first like big award show wow and so that was also really like exciting to get like dress because you know you 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 grow up you know watching the Oscars and and then all of a sudden like i you know have a whole styling team who's like decking me out and there's like a, 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 a Cadillac with tinted windows waiting at waiting the hotel. for you but yeah like, oh my God. Like comes into the car and drives me down the road to did the you lie down room. flat in the car like did you lie down flat not to wrinkle your dress did you do that oh my god I did, I did do a little bit of like like that because you the dress yeah uh, and then like going out and then doing the red carpet and just like looking at looking down the, the line at the red uh-huh. carpet, just seeing like hundreds of cameras, just like and people shouting your name, like yeah, wanting you to stop for a picture. Yeah. It was insane. It wow. was insane. I wow, cannot wow, believe wow. it's still a. I mean, that was in March, and that yeah, was, I, <laughs> like, I, I, I cannot. <laughs> believe, especially for this film that took us so long to make, make. And we got so many no's, BB, so many no's. Of so course. many people were just like, I'm sorry, I don't get it. A mm, comedy about the, mm, I mean, you know, mm, it's our mm. comedy centric around the death of a parent and a Christian bookstore in the Bronx and there's no real white people like we, like, <laughs> no, I don't really know. But, you know, like, it's like I, I don't really think I get this. Yeah. And that was really a bummer. That was a really a bummer. And so to then end up at that moment, like one of our producers, Kelly, like right before we like started walking the carpet, she was like, can you believe we're here? And we mm-hmm. all burst into tears. Oh, <laughs> all the makeup. No, no, no. <laughs> I know exactly. I was like, ah. no, no, no. <laughs> so I, I mean, I mean, being a director, of course, and a writer and making your movie, that's incredible. But I mean, before that, being an, a working actor, I know it's no joke. It's no joke getting the doors open. So you saying you heard a lot of no's. <clears throat> That would not have been new to you. You probably heard no's in the beginning of your career, you know, trying to get in. So being on the chair, I watched you in the chair last year during the pandemic. That was incredible. I just had Nana Mansa. So like, hold on a second. Oh my God, I know her. <laughs> but um, you know, uh, so b- being a working actor, you know, making a living from it, that is a, that is an achievement in itself. And talk was of being a writer and a director later on, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it, and it's hard. It, it's tough because, um, well. I, I think it, it's also probably partially my personality is that I'm not mm-hmm. ever really looking backward. I'm okay. always kind of looking forward. Okay. And so it's okay. hard for like, Thank you for saying that because I think part of the time I'm like, 
I don't spend time being like, oh, look at all the other people who aren't doing yeah. as well as yes, me. yes. I'm looking over here, being like, but mm-hmm. that's where I want to be. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so, and sometimes mm-hmm. I, I get lost in the sauce. You know, yeah, like, I'm not, I know like, what you mean. I'm not, I'm not present in the moment and just you know, you. giving myself a second to be like, wow, like I really have you done know, all that. I'm, have done all that. I'm doing that yeah, I'm yeah, doing and you are. Well. It's yeah, just not. It is I, not I, easy. I, well done. Yeah. Pat yourself on the back. <laughs> you don't need me to tell you that. <laughs> Your award shelf will tell you that. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> so now that, so I'm going to ask a, a controversial question maybe. So sure. now that Netflix is in Africa, we have Netflix in Africa, we have Amazon in Africa, we have all Blood and Blood Sisters was a massive hit. The King of Boys, massive hit. Uh, what's the one in South Africa? Blood and Water or something like that? Massive Blood and hit. Water. Blood yeah. and Water. So all of that is happening on the continent now. The actresses are getting like, we are, you know, we don't have to go to New York or California to be massive stars. All of that is happening. So do you want a piece of that action? Is that, are you going to try for that? Or are you going to stay in America? That's not, I mean, I don't think you it's know, controversial. I think you know one of the things. Uh, early, early, early in my career, I mm-hmm. had the good fortune of working with um, Anthony Mackie. Mm-hmm. Oh like yeah, America. Falcon. <laughs> but this is, is pre Captain America. We did mm-hmm. a play together mm-hmm. in New York, and I remember being like, "Oh, do you, actually, do you live in New York or LA?" Mm-hmm. And he was like, "I live in New Orleans. I'm from wow. New Orleans. I live in New Orleans." And I wow. was like what and it blew my mind i was like right. you don't have to live in new york or la to live and he was like no, no. you 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 audition yeah. for a job mm-hmm. and when they want you they book a plane and you go to wherever you're shooting and sometimes it's actually even in new orleans like i don't yeah. have to like you know or it's in atlanta or whatever yes. like, you know like yes. that's been kind of decentralized so i think yes. that was it really i think the pandemic gave me a moment of pause as it did everyone and, mm-hmm. and i was like I don't have to live in New York. I don't have to live in America. Yeah. Even Um, like our careers, especially now with auditions being self tapes or, you know, castings on Zoom. Online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, well, then let me go where I want to be rather than where I feel like I have to be. Fantastic. And so part of what prompted my move to the UK. Fantastic. Um, Fantastic. And then who knows? Maybe a few years from now we'll move back to Ghana or we'll do, you know, like, I, I don't know. Like, well, but it feels like everything is a little bit open. So I'm, I'm. That's a long answer to your question, but I think I just. No, no. I want to. I, 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 I get it because it. there's so much going on right now. Like there's so much, and the, the styling is so much different. Even the movies, the lighting. Like I was watching Blood Sisters. I'm like, are you serious? Is this a, a Nigerian production? This is crazy. You know, and you can see everything now. No, it's not the no, it is, not the it is crazy, yeah. and and then even going a bit some there's some some nudity. I was like, okay, we are moving. Well, what is happening? You know, yes, things know, that would never, know. you know, never have have yeah. happened before. So it's opening up. It's opening up. So people like you, this is. I mean, this is a time to just come in and you know, do something and just do something amazing. And I can't wait to see what you do next. You know, speaking of do what you do next, what are you doing next? Uh, well, I'm shooting a series here. Um, mm-hmm. It's called The Diplomat. Um, okay. It's um, with uh, Carrie Russell, Rufus oh. Sewell, um, David Jesse, a uh, really great cast, oh, and Pearl Mackey. And, um, and so we are uh, shooting around the UK, around England mm-hmm. um, for uh, until November, okay. October, November. Okay. Um, and that'll, that'll, that's a Netflix series. So that will go up on Netflix probably in 2023. Fantastic. And um, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 what's up. Are you excited? <laughs> yeah, I am excited. I really enjoy. I mean, that's it's uh, our showrunner Deb Khan. She's like mm. um, amazing, coming off of like Homeland and mm. Grey's Anatomy and West Wing. Like, she's got amazing, amazing pedigree as a, as yes. a writer. Yes, yes, yeah. And her writing is so great. You know, it's like as a writer myself, it's like I look at her writing and I'm like, whoa. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> you're the real deal. Is, you're the real deal, you know, because um, it's funny and it's smart and it's mm. tight and it's you mm. know. So it's been a real, it's been a real pleasure to work on that, just Fantastic. solely as an actor, right? Like Fantastic. no directing, no, no nothing, stress, like, and yeah, of all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Are you been really, really fun? Are you going to hold on to that biopic and maybe later on down the line? Oh, listen, listen, there will be a time when you like dust it out. Here I go. It's ready. 
find someone to give me a hundred million dollars. Hey. <laughs> so Nana, I know, I know you went out last night, and you, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop very soon. Just a few quick questions. Um, sure. So the people, people listening right now from all walks of life, the young people listening right now, the people who have been in diaspora for a long time, who have struggled a lot um, to achieve their dreams, had to maybe take, do something else rather than you know pursue the main dream because you have put food on the table or time has gone by you've been looking for your papers you know you know to make sure you're, you're you have the right to work in the uk and many years have passed now the dream seems far away all the young people coming up and you know they are you know starting to think what they want to do parents probably you know struggled and now it's time for, it's their turn so what advice would you have for you know the community here the african community here who are scotland, scotland is wide open right now you know, with diversity, yeah. inclusion, all of that. If they want to pursue uh, a career in the arts, like you've done, or something atypical, like you did, what yeah. advice would you give to them? Um, I would say this hap- This comes naturally to some people. Mm-hmm. Um, when they set off on a journey, like let's say it's like climbing a mountain, just because, mm-hmm. like a lot of people will look at the top of the mountain and be mm-hmm. like, "Oh my god, that is so far away." Mm-hmm. Um. And I have made it a habit of, and I find that a lot of the people that I'm surrounded by who are extremely successful, they are in the habit of looking just at base camp. Mm-hmm. Like you're not trying to get to the top of the mountain, you're just trying to get to base camp. Okay. So you're at zero and you're trying to go to 10,000, you know, right. or maybe not 10,000. Yeah. So you're, you're at zero and then you're trying to go to 2,000 feet. Mm-hmm. And then you're trying to go to 5,000 feet. Mm-hmm. And then you're just, you know what I mean? And then like just yeah. gradual, 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 because I think sometimes, like me, if you're sitting at home in your pajamas watching the Oscars and you're like, well, I'm yeah, never like, going to get there. Yeah, like, you that. know, because that's, look, but that's looking yeah. at the top of the mountain. Yeah. You yeah. know? So it's like, it's really about like, okay, what's going on in my community? Who is telling that? So for example, I think, um, okay, so for example, when I had the idea for Queen of Glory, mm-hmm. um, a friend of uh, one of our producers, Bafa Koto, he was like, hey, this movie came out at South by Southwest, which is a film festival in Austin, yeah, Texas. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. it, won, it won the audience award and there was a producer on that film who um, who started off as like a line producer and then he ended up getting bumped up to a producer because he's so like clever just great mm-hmm. and yeah clever and like really really good producer that should be a producer on Queen and Floyd like we should find him and okay we did neither of us knew him I, fe- I googled him. I found out that he went to Columbia University. I had a friend that went to Columbia University. I asked her to look in the directory, get his email address, give it to me. I cold emailed him and I said, hey, I have an idea for a film. Um, congratulations on the success of your independent film at, at mm-hmm. South by Southwest. Would you be interested in meeting for tea? Can I take you out for tea so that we can, you know, whatever. And and that was how I got him. That's our lead producer, Jamin Fantastic. Washington. Fantastic. And, and that, so I'm just telling that story because I think it's like, you have to be innovative in the way that you think. If you're waiting for like Steven Spielberg to, co- to, to come and come call to you, you. <laughs> and find you and be like, it comes to you, you will be waiting a long time, my yeah, friend. You know, yeah, it's like, yeah. and so it's really about like looking who's in your network, looking laterally, who is yeah. also starting to come up, you know, and getting together and being like, hey, I've got $5, you've got $5, we've got $10, let's go make a short film. Let's go make, you know, like let's go use our moderate re- our modest resources to be able to put something together and then we'll submit it to festivals and if we get into a festival all of a sudden we're now like now we're in the game you know yeah, and so i think that's that, true. Like, really important is just to don't don't sit at home in your pajamas watching honestly I, and i think the, the internet world, <laughs> <laughs> you will you get your feelings hurt <laughs> you get your feelings hurt and everything will seem so far away yeah it will seem so, so far yeah. away i'm and i it's think not really not uh, Sorry, I, I think the internet helps a lot. The new generation, they're very lucky. They have the internet and they can make connections that they couldn't before. It was It's not like back in the day of blocking, you know, Barry Gordy's car and starting to do your, trying to sing right in front of him or, or find him in battle or something like that. You can actually send tapes now and all that. You can find them online. You can put yourself on YouTube and all of that. Go ahead. Can I, but there's one caution, there's one caveat to what you're saying is that mm. there is also a back, like a, like a, uh, a back, not a backlash, but like, because everything is on your phone and mm-hmm. it looks like everyone else is having so much more fun. Success. And so much more mm-hmm. Success. It can also be kind of stifling. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I've had really close friends, like very close friends be like, you don't need me to come to your movie. Like you're doing so well. 
And it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I need everyone to come to my movie. I need I everyone know. I have ever met. <laughs> to come and and your aunties too. You, you know, but they're looking at they're looking at the highlights. They're looking yeah. at the reels on my yeah. Instagram. And yes. Like, this is you going to this place. And yeah. This you don't need me and it's like no 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 we need everyone Everybody. to pull up fantastic pull up. fantastic it's yeah. true no you're right i was gonna ask what are you most proud of on the whole project everything you did all the years it took the writing the independent spirit awards the recognition the rap wrapping it up all of that what are you most proud of i, I would say the thing i'm the most proud of is my relationship with my producers okay um there are five producers on this project mm -hmm. um and uh and i think it's been so amazing um that we've been able to work like this like we could we become a family you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um we, 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 we really become a family and i think that um being able to work on something that didn't have a lot of resources yeah. but like coming together and being able to execute and then riding this wave of success that we've had with the film yeah. festival circuit and on into yeah. the theatrical release. Yeah. Um, I'm really proud of those relationships. We Fantastic. like that that doesn't come easy, you know what I mean? Like it's like it's like working together on something like this really breaks people. Mm -hmm. You know? And, oh. like, and, and, and relationships you know, as well. I never want to see you again. Yeah. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> so are you gonna I take them? Are you going to take them project to project now? Are you going to be like, you know, that um, Judd Apatow with all his actors and on every project? Is that it now? Yeah, or? I, mean, I, I, definitely, I definitely think we'll find something else to work on for yeah. sure together. I, mm -hmm. I think that's like a really great, um, I think that's, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited just to find something else to work on with them. Fantastic. Too, yeah. Did you like Sarah? Do you like her? Um, I recognize Sarah. I appreciate Sarah. Yeah, I love Sarah. Okay. Sarah was a bit harsh. <laughs> Sarah was mean. <laughs> no, I like I Sarah. Mean, I'm joking. I'm joking. I like yeah. Sarah. <laughs> she is. She is. But it's also like, again, like I think, I think one of the things I was trying to explore with Sarah is that like mm. for me as a dark skinned black woman, mm -hmm. like I, I, I feel like, especially in the U S mm -hmm. I have really cultivated this, um, this likability thing. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like, it's like, Oh, I know exactly oh. how to do Right. In environments so that you are not threatened by me. Yeah. And that you like me and that mm. I reveal that's the power that I wield. Right. And that's that's, that's really taxing. You no, know you I don't mean? have to. No. What I like about that's what I liked about exploring with Sarah is that mm. she doesn't really do the like ability no. thing. No. He's like, I'm a scientist, I'm extremely proficient, I'm very good at my job, I'm highly intellectual. And there's no sugar coating on top yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I was interested in how audiences would receive that mm -hmm. because it's, it's a tough pill to swallow when you're not like when you don't look like um, I don't know Florence Pugh, right? Like mm -hmm. or like, mm -hmm. you, know, like mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't look like one of these women, to be you know, tough petite, white women mm -hmm. who you know be unlikable. And you're like, or like I'm thinking of like Angelina Jolie and Girl Interrupted. Right? Yeah, it's like, it's like oh, she's so bad, but also like. She's so hot. So yeah. Like, like, you know, and I, I just think that like, so Sarah like was like, kind of my addition to that canon. Yeah. I like that idea. I, I'll tell you something. Before I moved over, so I, I grew up in Nigeria, lived in Nigeria, all of that. And to me, the girls out there are like dark skinned or light skinned. Like either you're pretty or you're not pretty. Because I went to school with 2,000 girls. We're all black. So they're pretty, they're pretty light skinned girls. They were the not so pretty light skinned girls. Dark. So the whole right. dark skinned light skinned came as a, quite a bit of a shock to me. See how deep it was ingrained in American society. You know, the whole you're not attractive what i all the girls i knew who were the prettiest girls were dark skinned, so that was like quite a shock to me but over the years I've, i understand how deep that goes you know in society in, in society out here but and yeah, i, just, and I would say you're even i'm i was no I, I'm, I think you're even lucky to have experienced that in nigeria because in mm -hmm. ghana like i know you know some of my biracial friends and you mm -hmm. know would grow up with they people, get oh you're so beautiful your skin is so beautiful it's so beautiful yeah. And like, you know, and like, you know, we still, I mean, again, like, you want to talk about like skin whitening creams, like mm. the biggest uh, mm. order of that is the African continent. Mm. Like, we have our own colorism things. I don't know yeah, about we Nigeria, do. but I can speak for Ghana. And so, you know, and like, if you, the creams and things like that, that they advertise, they're always using light skin. I would say like, you know, women mm. like Jocelyn Dumont, 
in, mm. in Ghana. Just mm. uh, works a ton. Mm. She is a beautiful woman, but she's also fair skin, and so I think that's part of like you know that light skin thing is really it's very deep, and so um and so yeah, and, and so just knowing that there's going to be like kind of like a black woman tax on your success, right? Like it's like that everything's gonna be a little bit harder to come by in this industry because I'm a dark skin woman. I'm not a size zero, and also you know. Like yeah, and I and I have something to say, and I'm not gonna make myself smaller to make you feel comfortable anymore. Zero. I mean, if you're not gonna be size zero, you want to be like you. Okay, listen, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Who wants to be size zero anymore? That's we're done with that. <laughs> it's all about the hips. That. Well, all that, that, that line. All that line in the movie. All these hips, eh? You can put it to work or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was great that was great and my favorite favorite line in the movie was oh it's a family affair it's like no we're just all black it's not a family affair we're just all black i i, I died i was like okay we're uh, this is amazing <laughs> we're not related we just happen to all be black yeah, okay? all black. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like a family affair oh uh, oh my goodness yeah. Nana, it's been ami- i could talk to you serena is going crazy right now. <laughs> so i could talk to you for hours <laughs> but she's giving me the evil eye right now <laughs> But I wanted to ask you really, really quick before we go. Don't think about it. Just two quick questions. Okay. Don't think about it. So, okay. biggest okay. highlight of your career so far? Spirit Awards. Fantastic. Biggest challenge of your career so far? Oh. Uh. <laughs> no, I, I know what the answer is. I'm just like kind of afraid to say it out loud. I, I, okay, I the second it one? Of- Glib- I, I, I referenced it kind of glibly earlier, uh-huh. but um, you know, when you work on something for a really long time, and then mm-hmm. like, you know, there's certain people who I really expected to kind of show up for me and support uh, me in this process, yeah, yeah. and um, and they didn't, and and that's yeah. been really disappointing. It's just kind of like, you know, like close friends, family members who were just like, oh, I couldn't get a babysitter, and it's like, right, but I've been waiting, I've been making yeah, this film for a decade. You should, yeah, you couldn't have like planned in advance yeah. to get a babysitter to come movie you know yeah. so like that's you know, that that's, kind of I thing say, yeah well, that, that's, well that's, that's life the people you give the most to are not always those who give back and people who you don't expect are the ones who actually show up sometimes so I, i've learned that along the way you know not to expect yeah. things but it's people like, what own. do you do with that what that you do what do you do with that do you then go and give less like are you no. then with you know no it, you pay it forward you pay it forward you- the thing the people who have done things for me based on what my parents did for them and like, oh, you social person start. Oh my God. And then the doors are open because my parents paid a tax back then. And then you right. do something for somebody, you leave it alone. And then down the line, somebody goes, oh my God, are you BB's daughter? And you know, that kind of thing. So it's not always the one-to-one, the, 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 the one-to-one give back. Sometimes it's later down the line, you know? Yeah. But if you've given something to somebody in mm-hmm. terms of like showing up for them and being a good friend yeah. and like whatnot, and then they don't show up for you. Yes. You then turn around and keep. You see what I'm saying? Like I, I know what you mean. Mm. Like, but, but but now you have kind of hurt my feelings, and I feel kind mm. of sensitive about mm. that. You know. So it's like, well, what? How? Do what do we, we do? Go forward with this relationship? What do we do? Because, mm. Exactly. Because all of a sudden, I thought we were having this kind of relationship. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, it's actually not that. So do I need to protect myself and pull back a little bit? I know what you mean. Or. Or do I just kind of pretend like it didn't happen? Like it's it's. A I know I know exactly what it it is. I, yeah. I, what I do is I, I have my one two people, and then everybody else is special, but mm, it's okay. We'll, and then circle. if that, if those one two people hurt me, then I'm done. Like I'm it's over. I'm finished. But I think it's okay. And then everybody else is like, okay, okay, we can go ahead. It's okay. You know that kind of thing. I don't know if that works in this situation, but but you yeah, will find. Yeah, yeah. You will find people who you didn't even give anything to or didn't expect from, and they will be right. the ones pouring into you. It will shock you, as you know. Hundred percent, and yeah. that is that is happening. I'm trying to focus on the positive, mm. but you yeah. ask, and so yeah. that's where I'm my that in terms I know what of you my mean. Biggest appointment or challenge. I know. It's just trying to get mostly right with like what that means. That means. Last question: What are what are two things about you that people who know you might not know about you? The people who know me might yeah, not know about, know about you. I Are you a secret am... secret ballerina or oh, well, do you play um, the trombone? <laughs> definitely the trombone. I okay. I did play the alto saxophone. So that's something that a lot of people okay. don't know about. All right. I did play the alto saxophone for years. 
Um, I think it's still sitting in my parents' closet somewhere, or maybe they've given it away <laughs> finally. Um, and then something else that people don't know about me is I am like one of my favorite. Okay, this is like really actually one of my favorite things about England, living in England or living in Europe, is that you guys don't refrigerate your eggs. No, it's like you don't refrigerate your eggs, and I love that. I love that because in America. <laughs> <laughs> their egg. And it is, it is, it is the antithesis. Like I like to watch cooking shows. Something else that some people that might not know about. Me. And like Martha Stewart, whenever Martha Stewart is baking something, her eggs are sitting out on the like you know on the table. Bowl, on like, yeah, yeah. Does not go into the fridge to get her eggs no. because room temperature eggs are much better. But work better. And so like you guys have that figured out. <laughs> America doesn't have that figured out, and that is why I live here. That's why the, that's the most random answer to that question I have ever gotten, <laughs> and I love, it. <laughs> I love it. I have so much more to ask you, but we're out of time. Thank you so much for giving up your time to us. Thank you so so much. We're looking forward to seeing you on Wednesday. We will be there in our glad rags um, yes. to support you. <laughs> Thank you very much. If there's anything you need us to do before then, just don't be a stranger. Let us know. And now you're a friend to the show, so you can come back any time obviously don't tell oh, us I just turn know. up just turn up just tune in <laughs> while we're, i'm in the middle of a show nana is online okay hold on pause Yay. nana is here so don't worry about you're officially a friend of the show now and then um we will go on queenofglory.co.uk to get all the details everybody listening queenofglory.co.uk get all the details where it's showing when it's showing what it's about and all of that and just support 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 our sister our Ghanaian sister our beautiful american sister and everything in between and it's going to be fantastic we can't wait to see you on wednesday and you know tell everybody about the film and one more thing before we go you know this for yes. sure right like nigerian jollof is better than Kenyan jollof right obviously right 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 okay. yes you like like yeah ketchup and it rice. was great having you bye nana it was lovely having <laughs> you <laughs> get ketchup how dare you <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to have you on the show. Thank you so much for being here, and we will see you at the premiere. Yeah, have a wonderful day. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>